want to talk about what I experienced on my vacation. Uh, I took a break uh, from uh, all the politics and I went on a 15 day road trip across the country. And I drove through about 14 different states, but my main focus of the vacation was uh, on the New England states. The, uh, and that's mainly where I spent my time doing the touring. But uh, while I was away, uh, I tried to stay away from politics. Of course, during the evenings when I'd be in my hotel room, wherever I was staying, I would, you know, catch up on the politics. But pretty much during the day, I was I escaped from politics, except when this friend of mine named Kitty would interrupt my day on purpose to uh, to uh, upset me and send me things that was going on. But uh, but I just want to talk about what I encountered on this vacation now. In the mornings, when I would walk through the hotel lobby, they would, of course, have CNN on. And I guess it would be like 9 in the morning, 8.30 or 9 in the mornings when I would leave my hotel to go out and, and see all the sights and all that. And they would be just gloom and doom. I mean, the coronavirus is killing everybody. The hospital, this is what they were saying. The hospitals are overflowing. The president is not taking it seriously. Uh, you know, on and on and on. This would be like 9 o'clock in the mornings. When I would come back to my hotel room about 5.30 or 6 and come through the lobby, CNN would still be on and they would be saying the exact same thing. So you mean to tell me that for all that time, that's all that's been on CNN. It's all this uh, gloom and doom. And of course, all the racism and the chaos was going on as well in the media. But what I encountered while I was on vacation was entirely the opposite of what the media uh, was reporting. What I encountered was were real Americans that love this country and that, that get along with everybody. Now, every place that I vacationed, I was the only black person. I haven't seen a black person in 15 days. Every place that I went on vacation, every hotel that I stayed in, everywhere I went, I only interacted with white people. And those people treated me like royalty. Now, they didn't treat me any different just because I was black. I don't even think they even noticed. See, nobody noticed that I was black but me. It was obvious. I was the only one that noticed that I was black. Uh, between the locals and the tourists, uh, the tourists themselves, the people in the stores and the, the wait staffs at the hotels and at the restaurants. I was treated with nothing but respect and royalty, really. And because, see, see, I'm a paying customer, just like everyone else. So they didn't treat me any different. You know, they didn't act like I was special because I was black. They treated me like a human being. So I was looking for the racism. Now, I knew First of all, that there is the, all this racism that they're talking about is not true. I've never really experienced any racism. But this vacation, during this time when all this racism talk is going on from the liberal media and the black race baiters, this vacation proved the lie. Now, I was I vacationed in uh, wealthy areas with wealthy white people, the locals and the tourists. I was the only black person and anywhere that I went, and all I got was good conversation. I met a lot of people, uh, people that love America. Uh, it's just a good time. I went to this one oceanfront uh, wealthy place in Maine, and they have like this walking path through this wealthy neighborhood. Okay, there's houses on the right if you're going, I guess, in the, this direction. The houses on the right are right on the beach, and the houses on the, on the left are right there. So it's just a path in between it. And anybody can walk through this path. These were wealthy people, big, beautiful homes. And so I'm walking down the path and people are just talking to me, people that live there. And I'm like, you live in this beautiful neighborhood? And it's like, yeah. And I'm, and I'm saying, you have a getaway. You can get away from all the noise and chaos. I talked to several people during walking up and down that path. But I encountered these three ladies. Uh, they were walking a dog, two dogs. And I was talking about how cute the dogs were. And then we stopped and we were talking. After about, and they lived there because I asked them, did they live there? And they each pointed out the house that they lived in. And after, and I told them I was from Texas and we were just talking and talking and about after about 10 minutes of me talking with these ladies, they told me, please don't go back to Texas. Stay here with us. Now these were liberal. This is in Maine. And I know these people probably vote Democrat, probably because it's a, a liberal state, but I'm a black woman. These were white women, wealthy white women encountering a strange black woman in their neighborhood, walking past their homes. 
And what did they say? Please stay. Don't go back to Texas. Stay here with us. Okay, so I'm looking for the racism. Okay, I'm looking for the racism. I stayed at a bread and breakfast, a cute little bed and breakfast in, in Vermont. And one evening I went out on the back patio where they have, a, you can sit out there and eat or just talk. And I, I, you know, so I'm just walking around. So I walked out on the patio and it was a group of white young people. When I say young, late uh, 20s, early, middle 30s. And I walked out there and they said, hey, come sit down and have a glass of wine with us. Let's give you, some, let's pour you a glass of wine. So I sat down and I said, well, you know, I don't drink. But I sat there and I talked with these people. It was just like I was the only black. And we were just conversing, just having a good time, just talking about everything. Nobody treated me with any kind of disrespect. Okay. I, one day I was at a beach in uh, Rhode Island. And I was trying to get to the bathroom, but I really had to go to the bathroom. And there was these three elderly ladies, maybe, and they were in their middle 70s, I say. And they were just sitting there, and I passed by, and they said something to me. I don't know what they said to get my attention. And I, I stopped, and I you know, acknowledged them and started talking to them. And I kept, they would not let me go. That The conversation just kept going and going and going. And I, I couldn't even get away from these ladies. And they said it was three white ladies. And they said... You know, they wanted to take my photo. I let them take my photo. And they said, you're our hero. You just blessed our day. These are three white women saying this to a black woman just passing through. You, you, you blessed our day. We really love you. I mean, we wish you would stay here. They said the same thing. They're like, they all, and I told them I was from Texas. Okay, so this is going on in areas where I was the only black person. So I'm trying to find out what's going on with the media when they say, uh, okay, and the media and the liberal uh, black race baiters are saying there's so much uh, uh, racism going on. But I also want to talk about the white privilege. Okay, where's the white privilege? If I'm staying at the same hotels as, the, as white people, eating at, the, eating at the same restaurants as white people, what privilege did they have that I didn't have? What did they get to do that I couldn't do? I, even when I went in stores and little shops, the people that worked in the shops, they weren't following me around or watching me. They were very helpful. Anything I needed, I'd ask them for. We had conversation. The other people that were in the stores trying to buy things, we would say, oh, hey, can you show me this? And they would say, look what I found. They would come to me and say, oh, I found what you were looking for. Other people, it was just normal behavior that normal people do. There was no racism. There was no uh, white supremacy going on. So I just want to say that the media is lying to us. And see, let me get back to the coronavirus. Yes, uh, when we went inside places, anytime you went in, indoors, any, in any facility, they said, please wear a mask. So, you know, we wore a mask. But other than that, nobody was concerned about the coronavirus. Nobody was saying, oh, no, come in here, don't touch me, don't talk to me. Even though I was from Texas, you know, because I told people, and we laughed about it. Because that's what's on the media. The media is lying. What the media wants you to do is not to enjoy your vacations. Because none of the hotels were booked. Because a lot of people are not going on vacation. A lot of flights have been canceled. They canceled my flight. So I just said, you know what, I'll drive. You're not going to stop me. But see, that's what the media wants. They want you to focus on dying from the coronavirus. They want you to stay indoors and watch CNN. And if you watch CNN, it's a different world. When I would walk through the lobby and hear what they were saying, I was like, what world are they living in? This is not what's going on. That's not what's going on. I was at beaches. I went to beaches. You name it. National parks. I, everybody's outside enjoying themselves. Everybody's, people on vacation. People were vacationing. And again, people wore masks when they went inside places because there was a sign on the door that said, wear a mask. But nobody was upset or scared, there was no chaos, there was no racism, there was just normal life. And I just want to say that for people that are believing the media, they are lying to you. That's why they want you to stay inside. They want you to, they want to put fear in your heart so, so you stay inside. And while you're locked inside your home, afraid of catching the coronavirus, they want you to turn on the channel and watch them so they can pound the fear in you, just pound it in you. So you'll be afraid. And they want you to think America's this big racist country. You know what they've done? They've gotten together a group of losers. And I call them losers because whenever someone claims that they cannot make it in America, they tell, that they tell me right then that they are a loser. Because you, I have never met a person, black, white, Asian, 
a Hispanic that has tried to succeed and did not succeed. Sure enough, you may not succeed on every when you first try a couple of times, but there's never been a person in America, especially, that has not continually tried to succeed and just kept failing. So no, what they've done is they've compiled a group of losers and they bust them from place to place, put them on a bus to go and destroy, destroy property and then claim racism. Destroy everything in the name of racism. Tear down statues. And let me tell you, I talked to a lot of people in different places. I went to Massachusetts. All the, every place I went, of course, those are liberal states. But those people are not agreeing with all this tearing down history and stuff. They're not agreeing with all that. So uh, the media, is li they're lying to you about all these things. And I want people to understand that the real America, I had nothing but positive encounters. A, a, a black woman traveling to nothing but white, but mainly white states, interacting, vacationing, and talking and eating with, conversing with, touring with, nothing but white people. I haven't seen black people in 15 days, and I'm telling you the truth. And not one time was I treated any differently than anybody else. Like I said, the only person that probably noticed that I was the only black person was me. The way I was being treated, the way I was interacting with people, America is the best country in the world. And I'll continue to say that, and I don't care who gets angry. You cannot uh, find a better country where everybody who tries to succeed can succeed. That's America for you. That's the real America. That's the America that I love. That's the America that I fought in, fought in the military for. And that's the America that I will continue to fought, fight for. And I want you to do the same thing. This is the greatest country in the world. I want to thank all, thank all my su subscribers because I'm over 100,000 subscribers. I see that now. I want to thank you all. I mean, I can't even believe <laughs> that people will take the time to sit down and watch my videos. I'm always in awe about that. I'm like, why are they so interested in what I have to say? But I'm glad that you uh, think enough of me to sit down and watch my videos. And I hope to always bring something to the table that's worth listening to. I don't like to make videos unless I have something that I think people want to hear. I don't like to waste people's time because I don't like my time wasted. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. I thank you for all the people, the generous donations that you give me. I appreciate that. And I want to continue to be a voice for what's right for, for this country. I'm going to continue to support President Trump all the way through November. I will con continue to support him. I'm not jumping on and off like a lot of people are. I, I don't believe in that. If we don't have President Trump, this country is pretty much gone. I've said that. Without President Trump, it's the end of America. And people need to take that seriously. Have a blessed day.